Well, hello there and welcome to the very first um, teaching in this 10-part series called The First Principles, or the Bach to Basics. Um, it's the it, correct term in the Word of God is the first principles of the oracles of God, uh, which is found in Hebrews 6. Now, that's going to be the main book we're going to focus on during this whole 10-part series. Um, and for those of you that might not know, it's a New Testament book. Um, for those of you that do know, you'll know that it's quite a complex book as well. Um, but this is where we find the first principles of the oracles of God. So before we actually begin the, the, the series of teachings we're going to go through, I just want to give you a little background on the book of Hebrews before we begin, just to show you in context why this teaching was so vitally important. So the book of Hebrews was written to the Hebrews, you know, that was the, the whole intent of the, the book. It wasn't really written in a, in a way to speak to us like Gentiles. It was towards these Hebrews. And what was happening at this specific point in time was that they were being persecuted, that um, you know they were being very discouraged by a lot of the different things that were happening. Jesus hadn't come back in the way that they thought um, he might. Some of the apostles of the Lamb had been martyred already. And pretty much it was a pretty miserable existence. It was a very dangerous um, existence. You know, could, could we imagine our family members or our friends being in physical danger or being thrown in prison for what they believe, you know? So this was very real to them. This was, this was a big deal. So what they were thinking about, what they were contemplating was, let's turn back to Judaism. Because Judaism was legal. They were still worshipping that same God in many respects. And they could worship God, you know, just in whatever way they, they kind of wanted to. But the, the writer of Hebrews set out to convince them otherwise. To convince them of the superiority of the New Testament in Jesus Christ compared to the Old Testament, the old agreement between God and mankind. Now, this never discounts the Old Testament because the Old Testament proves the new and the new proves the old. You know, they, they have to live together and that's why they're in the scriptures together. But um, this is a, a very skillfully written book, obviously under the spirit of the Lord, of course, but very skillfully written. And it takes a lot of time to really study through and really understand it. But I'm just going to tell you about the, that background and the portion we're going to we're going to focus on. And the portion we're going to focus on is it's at the end of the fifth chapter and the beginning of the sixth chapter. So the writer of Hebrews comes to this point where he's proved a lot of different things and he, and he continues on so and um, you know there's a big chapter about faith which is hugely important for us very very important for us as, uh, as Christians so it's, a, it's an awesome book but um, this little portion the end of chapter 5 and the beginning of chapter 6 is basically where he gives them the direction that they need so let's have a think about it you know you might in, you, you're being persecuted you're in danger of being thrown in prison You'd think you'd get a different, different scenario, different advice, but this is what God comes out with, because obviously He's speaking through the writer of Hebrews, and this message wasn't intended intended to offend them or discourage them. It was quite the opposite. It was to lift them up. But when you look at it, when you actually see what He says, you think, well, why would you say that? So what God says was, and let me just take it from the scriptures for us. Here we go. For when in times past you ought to be teachers. You have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have become such of need of milk and not strong meat. I'm just being careful because of the old Scottish accent, just getting that across. He said, in times past you ought to be teachers. You, know, you should be teaching people just now, but you're now the one in need of being taught. You need to come back to the milk of the word to relay that foundation again and find that energy that you once had. So the great thing for a, for a new believer is it says very specifically in the word that you need to be taught again, which means they were taught this stuff in the first place. The writer of Hebrews knew this. So they were taught in the first place when they first believed. And that is hugely important. Because obviously the Hebrew Christians, their minds had come away from what the teaching were about to um, study. So this is really important. So instead of God giving advice about, you know, watch yourself when you've been persecuted or, you know, deliver each other from this or pray for each other from this, it was come back to the milk of the word. It actually says in the word that they become dull of hearing, you know. 
and you know when you come across that for the first time it's you know as a as, as someone who studies the word you think why why did you say that why but when you actually go through it you study it and you live it you see how unbelievably powerful it truly is because it brings you back to that place as a christian where regardless of your circumstances you can have joy you can still have peace and still feel that security because your mind is on high rather than the things that are around you and this is the power of god's word now faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of god and that is what you're going to hear in this 10 part series no real testimonies from me or examples from Spurgeon or this or that or any of these sort of things. Just God's word. Now there's a big reason behind this particular teaching, you know. And we have to remember that in Hebrews, this was God's advice for these Christians at this time. You know, so for whatever trouble we're in or whatever, this was the advice from God to come back and refresh ourselves in the, the milk of the word. And when you travel into the beginning of Hebrews 6, what you find is six teachings, six doctrines, six New Testament doctrines, which are what God describes as the milk of his word. Now, one of the great things about this, and I'm giving a bit of the game away you know, for a later on, is that if you can imagine if there's you know, a really big fire burning and there's bits coming off and starting fires all over the place, you know, and you know what would you do? You wouldn't go and try and stamp out all the little fires and, you know, you'd go for the fire itself. You'd, 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 you'd go for the fire and try to get it out. That's what you'd try and do. And this is what God does. So regardless of our circumstances, our state of mind, uh, our situation, God goes for the root of the problem. He ignores the symptoms, like, you know, our fear or this or that. He, he, he feels it, he knows it, but he goes for the root. And for these guys, for where they'd gone, where their state of mind now was, God was going in with the big guns, the big doctrines. Now faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Be transformed by his word because it's a living word and it is Jesus Christ. And this teaching is three and three, Jesus Christ. So there's six teachings, uh, repentance from dead works, faith towards God, the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, which is a strange one, but we'll get to that. Resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. Six teachings, six very basic teachings. And each have got three little teachings as well, which is awesome. Now in this series, we're not only going to touch on these, we're going to move on to the doctrines of growing in grace. That's the next stage. I like to teach this as a whole. But when we're finished, you'll have this foundation, this rock solid foundation seeds planted in your heart that begin to grow and you'll have a strength and you won't even understand where it's coming from but you'll like it because it's so so sweet let me assure you it is so so sweet so let's get straight into it. repentance from dead works the very first teaching now you might look at this teaching at the end of it and think you know yeah yeah okay but guys you can't take one of these teachings you can't take three of them you've got to take all ten of them they all link together and they all form this foundation so it's, it's hugely important but repentance from dead works is actually a, a, an amazing place to start because it's the very first thing that we do as christians we come to that place of repentance but repentance we normally sort of associate it with uh, you know grieving and feeling sorrow for our sins and things like that and that, that's a good thing at times and um, especially when you give your heart to the lord but the true meaning of repentance in the new testament is metanoia that's the, that's the the greek word if you want it metanoia and what it means is to change one's mind and not only to change your mind but to change your actions as well so that's what repentance actually is and it's greatly illustrated in the prodigal son and for most of you probably know the prodigal son story but i'll, I'll keep it very i'll keep it very short and um, we, we know that he asked for his inheritance off he went to a strange land spent it all and here's him sitting in this uh, pigsty looking at his situation and thinking even my father's servants live better than this i am going to go back to my father now what happened right there with the prodigal son was repentance his mind had changed from where he was at he, he saw what he was and he not only did that but he followed up by action he turned around and went back to his father and that is true repentance is when your mind actually changes you know take, take the emotion out especially in this particular teaching take the emotion out 
and just look at it for what it is, it's when our minds actually change. And what does the word say? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that's the true nature of repentance. And what God says is repentance from dead works. He doesn't say sin, repentance from sin. He says repentance from dead works. And the reason for that is that dead works are the root of sin. You know, it's pointless trying to get at all the small fires, try to deal with all the symptoms. You need to go for the root. And God explains very clearly what dead works are within his word. And what he always talks about when it's dead works is it's things that can cripple you spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and even physically. That's what these dead works produce. That's what sin produces. So God sets about in the word to show you what dead works actually are. Now this is really important for us as Christians because we need to know where the fence is around the field. You know, we need to know what is around that fence, all the different things that God looks at and says, this is dead works. This is what's going to cause you problems if you do these things. Okay? Now, never don't, don't worry about, you know, I know we all have trouble with sin, we have trouble with different little things and what. I'm getting to that. That'll come just a little bit later when we speak about grace. Um, but for the moment, the part I want you to really look at, the part I really want you to look at is these lists. Now, God shows it in Galatians, works of the flesh. Ephesians, which is work of, works of darkness. Back to Galatians again for works of the law. Works of the flesh, works of darkness, and works of the law. That's the three teachings. Remember I said before, there's three teachings in each one. Now, if you go to these places, you'll find these lists of things that God considers dead works. Things that will hurt our lives, you know. And you really have to look at them in the Greek text to really figure out what they actually are and what they mean. But when you do, what you'll find is, Christian, I can assure you, you'll go through these lists, each one of them. Some of them you might not quite understand. But what you need to do is sit there and say, I, I disagree with this stuff. You know, I do too. I'm with God. I disagree with this stuff. I, you know, I struggle with it, but I disagree with it. It's not what I want to be. It's, it's not who I want to be. It's not the mindset I want to have. Again, we're getting to grace in a few teachings time. The answers for that. Just, just at the moment, repentance from dead works. Changing your mind from dead works. And when you look through these lists, you'll see things like fornication, adultery, uh, heresy, seditions is a good one. You know, we can we can all be guilty of that. It's um, you know, for for those of you who might not know, seditions is it's it's like unlawful speech and actions towards like governments and kings and those that are in authority. And you ask yourself the question: How many times do we slag off politicians? You know, and that's seditions. You know, but remember, God's word is always teaching us. It says unlawful actions towards those in government. It doesn't talk about lawful. So you can't lawfully have actions and speech towards governments and kings because we live in a democracy. That's what God wants, you know. And, um, you know, so you've really got to look into it. But all these different things, when you look at them, what God is wanting you to look at and say is, do you agree with any of these things? And Christian, you're going to say, no, I don't agree. I don't want to be like this. So the study notes on our blog page will show you all the different meanings. You can have a right good look through it and uh, you know see what you think. But Christian, you will agree. You will agree with me. You know, there's, I don't think there's any question about that at all, brothers and sisters. There's no. But what we're going to focus on just for this teaching here is the third one: works of the law. Now, people don't really get into this and really understand this and really grasp this. And this is really important for future teachings in this ten-part series for us to fully understand this part. And again, I'll read it out from the word, just to save the Scottish accent. Knowing that a man is not justified by works of the law, but by the faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified in him and not by works of the law. Now, basically what that says is, and it's in the book of Galatians, basically what that says is that your works mean absolutely nothing to your salvation. You know, nothing at all. There's, there's nothing you can do to earn salvation other than by faith and sometimes we can so easily get ourselves caught up into works and feeling like we need to please God and we need to this and we need to that and this portion of scripture clearly shows us that we are not it says justified 
Word justify means declared righteous. We are not declared righteous by our works. Now, just to give you an example of that, is me sitting here. This adds nothing to my salvation. This does not make me better or worse than any other person. I could switch off this camera and not do this season and stop teaching, and my salvation would remain exactly the same. My salvation is in Jesus Christ by faith. And that's it. Repentance from works of the law. You know, let's really think about it again. Repentance from works of the law. Now we're in the new covenant in Jesus Christ. And I just want to show you where that new covenant almost begins. You know, we'll speak about law later. We'll speak about grace later. But just, just for this moment in time, for you Krishna, especially if you are really struggling. Because you can put all this aside and all that aside. This is the big one. This is the real big one. Repentance from works of the law. When Jesus was on the cross, he took the sour wine and then he said, it is finished. Now what he said more clearly in the Greek was, it is perfectly perfect, it is completely complete. Everything that ever needed to be done for our sin yesterday, today and tomorrow, Christian. Yeah, not just back, you know, just the things we've done, the things we, we're doing, the things we're going to do. It is finished. It's completely complete. Everything that ever needed to be done for that sin was paid for on that cross 2,000 years ago. And when Jesus was on the cross, God put the sin of me and you, our filth, upon him. And God had to turn his head away. And then Jesus died. And so did our sin with him. And that's what we need to grab hold of. It is by faith and by faith alone. So let me put it this way. Um, if you or I were to think that our works, good or bad, affected our salvation. What we're saying is, and again, don't take this with any condemnation, just look at it very clinically. What we're saying is that somehow God's salvation for mankind was flawed. That what Jesus did wasn't enough. It was inadequate. Christian, you know that's not the truth. It was fully adequate. It completely measured up. Jesus did everything needed to be done for our sins. He lived his life from his birth to his death in thought, word and deed perfectly because we can't. Therefore, the old covenant, which we'll speak about later, goes to the side and this new covenant in grace comes forth in faith. Your salvation is bought by faith, not by works. By believing in that precious sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That's why it's so important. That's why the blood's so important. That's why the victory there was so important. It is huge. It is finished. Waving the victory flag. Waving the flag at the end of the race. And in a lot of respects, it was almost like a, a finishing point and a starting point. Because now there was this new agreement between God and man. Mankind couldn't live up to what God said in the law or we can never can but Jesus could and he did for us so friends our repentance from that has to be very real not on an emotional level but as a decision and saying I am no longer going to think that going to church or reading my bible every day or this or that adds to my salvation it doesn't it can't your salvation is already bought you've begun your life as a Christian with an A plus and it remains that way through faith. And it's just as simple as that. Now again, the study notes for this um, series that we're going to go through are all on our blog page at thetribulationsoldier.com. And that means that these lists, these things I was telling you about, you can go through it for yourself in your own time and really see what these things mean. We're just really stuck for time with these, these kind of videos, you know. But um, really look at it for yourself. And all you need to do, don't, don't take these on and start to try and stop doing this. We haven't got to that yet. We haven't got to the answers to sin and how to overcome sin. It's just look at them and say to yourself, I disagree with all these things. And friend, if that you disagree with all these things, then you have repented. Your mind has changed. You've got nothing to feel guilty about. You've nothing to be concerned about. You agree with God. And that's what Jesus said, if you love me, you'd obey my commandments. And what he really actually said was, if you love me, you'd agree with my teachings. You wouldn't agree with the things out there. You'd agree with me, you know? So that's the very first teaching, you guys. That's repentance from dead works. 
that's it, fully studied from the Word of God from many, many years and preached it many times, <clears throat> that's the very first one. Now again, it might not look great, but a foundation never does, really, you know. But as this builds up, so too will the revelation. So too will the, 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 the real stuff start poking through. This will start making even more sense than maybe it does just now. We have to take it as a full teaching, you know. But I'm with you all the way through this, and especially if you're really struggling at the moment. I'm asking you to put your faith in, not in me or my abilities, but God's word that God can transform your situation from within, from the root. So listen guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, it's been a little bit longer this time, the rest will be just a little bit shorter um, and a little bit more to the point. But hopefully that started us off really well. So thank you so much you guys and God bless you from Scotland. <laughs>